bow and oversee of this great ministry. Man, put your hands together for our very own apostle, Daryl McCoy, Sr. Church You're gonna help me sing this song. Cut me up. Here we go. Oh, my 
Places my feet on the sunny ground. I know a man from Galilee. If you listen, he will set you free. He's the son of David, seed of Abraham. Show you out the mountain, he's a making number lamb. That's why I say God is so good to me. Come on, y'all. Oh, God is so good to me. God is so good to me. Take it on in. Come on, y'all.
God ought to be able to help my side. God is so good to me. Oh, y'all better help me say, God is so good to me. Each and every day, God is so good to me. God is so good to me. Come on, give God. Come on, give God a great big hand praise. It went in my mind. Come on, lift them hands all over the building tonight. Let my, let my men lay it down. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you love it? Hands ought to be going up everywhere. All over the building tonight. Show me that. When you think of God's goodness, and his tender mercy and all that God has done for us. Everybody ought to be up on your feet and you ought to have something that you ought to be able to say it's unbalanced, make sure it levels again. You ought to have something that you ought to be able to say to God. If he ain't never done nothing for you, keep your mouth shut. But if God healed you, God brought you out, God delivered you that it ought to be some hallelujahs and glory to God's just, and, and, and nobody have to make you, Sam. Brother Forbes, don't nobody have to make us when God knowed he the boy he brought us from. Should have been dead in our grave and should have been messed up on the operating tables inside the jailhouses. Just should have been messed up, but nobody but the Lord. I say nobody but the Lord. Somebody said if it had not been, for the Lord when he sides is not out. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? Check your monitor. Just level on your monitor. Don't you love him tonight? Lift both hands as high as you can get them. Get to see my baby all the way from Freeport, Bahamas. I love you. God bless you tonight. While your hands are up, Father, let a blessing be upon us. Let your anointing rest in this place. Let us feel your presence in Jesus' name. While you're standing, we thank God for this great man of God. My son, I'm glad and proud to be his spiritual father. I'm just thankful for him and his commitment. He sat on the front row in my church day and night for five straight years. He went through some trials because he didn't get no job. And he said that uh, he said that God told him to sit there and people were persecuting him, people were saying things about him. But he sat there day and night for five years. Very quiet, didn't say nothing, but he watched every move I made. And after five years, God said, let him preach. And he got up and there was such an anointing on his life. Five years of just waiting and watching. You know, the David said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They're going to mount up with wings as eagles. They're going to run and not be weary. They're going to walk and not faint. I thank God for his brothers and sisters. Amen. I love you so much. And in-laws, I love you all. We appreciate you coming. One thing about it, his family love him. Because they know where the Lord brought him from. And this was this was old G that God saved him. Filled him with the Holy Ghost. So without any further delay, introducing the sum and presenting the others, Augusta, you're familiar with him. Amen. Let's give God a great big hand praise as we receive all the way from Gulfport by way of Moss Point, Mississippi, our very own Prophet Terrence Johnson. Give God a great big hand praise for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, keep those hands going for Jesus. Come on, keep those hands going for Jesus. I know you can do better than that for Jesus. Come on, get a praise on your lips. Come on, open up your mouth and let a praise pop out of your lips tonight. 
Come on, if God did anything for you, I know it was a football game a couple weeks ago that you went to and you were screaming louder than that. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise in this place on tonight. Come on, if God did anything for you, if he healed your body, if he gave you your mind back, if he delivered you from drugs, if he delivered you out of that bad relationship, you ought to open up your mouth and give God praise in this place on today. You ought to magnify the King of kings and Lord of lords. I said, there's somebody that came up in this place on tonight to praise God. If I had about 15 people that would open up their mouth and give God the loudest hallelujah, the loudest thank you, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and give him the loudest hallelujah. If I had a couple soldiers in this place that didn't worry about who was sitting next to them, that would open up their mouth and shout, thank you, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and give him a praise in this place on tonight. You came to run the enemy out of your life, out of your mind, out of your body, out of your spirit. We came to run the enemy out of your finances on tonight. How many need a miracle in this place on tonight? Come on, you ain't praising him like you need a miracle in this place. You ain't magnifying him like you need a miracle in this place. I'm talking about you ought to lift your hands and throw your head back and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. Come on, every eye closed. Hands lifted on tonight. Come on, hands lifted, eyes closed. Ask God to allow you to worship him tonight in spirit and in truth. Because there's somebody that came in this place for a miracle on tonight. Somebody can't leave out of here the same way that they came. Somebody came to get a miracle on tonight. Come on, if he did anything for you, if he healed your body. If he saved your kids, if he watched over you last night. Come on, give him praise on today. Worship him. The King of kings and Lord of lords. God getting ready to give somebody a miracle on tonight. Don't worry about who's sitting next to you. Don't worry about looking at me. Close your eyes and you'll get something from God on tonight. His presence is in the place. Hallelujah. Just think back over your life, what God brought you from. If he hadn't did anything for you, then keep your mouth shut. But if you know he gave you a supernatural miracle, your mouth ought to be open, giving him the greatest hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, I thank you for sparing me from that car wreck. Lord, I thank you when they told me I supposed to die in the hospital that I'm living right now. Somebody lost their mind, but God gave you back your mind. You had cancer in your body, but God healed you from cancer. Your kid is supposed to be in jail right now, but God made a way. Real, real sweet. Real sweet. Real sweet. Real sweet. Real sweet. God going to do something for somebody tonight. 
somebody dealing with some situations right now, but if you can get in the presence of God, if you can get your mind off of everything, to get it on him, if you can get your mind off of everything, and get it on him. If you can get your mind off of everything, get your mind on Jesus. Just thank him for the good. Thank him for the bad. Thank him for the ugly. Thank him for the bills that's due right now. Thank him for the pain that's in your body right now. Thank him for the heartache. Only the true worshipers can worship him. The spirit and the truth. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Somebody got something they got to release. Come on, release it. His presence is here. And the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Lord, I see Joe tonight, Lord. I magnify you tonight, Jesus. Lord, I give you the honor. I give you the praise on tonight, Lord. Nobody but you, Lord. Lord, there's nobody but you, Jesus. Lord, you get the glory for everything, Lord. Lord, let your presence sweep through this place, Lord. Thank you on tonight, Lord. How many feel his presence? Now I want you to open up your mouth. And I want you to give God the loudest hallelujah for the King of kings and Lord of lords. Come on, I want you to give it up for Jesus Christ on tonight. Come on, open up your mouth and give it. Come on, I know you can scream louder than that for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jesus on tonight. The King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank God for this great man of God, magnificent man of God. Thank God for him giving me the opportunity to minister tonight. One of the greatest preachers in the world. You ought to be on your feet. For Apostle Derek Glenn McCoy Sr. Come on, I know you can do better than that for your pastor. Hallelujah. We thank God for him. Thank God for him. Thank God for his lovely elect lady sister, Dorothy McCoy. Thank God for her looking beautiful on tonight. Thank God for all the great, great, great host of elders, angel of this house. Pastor David King Cannon, such an humble man. Come on, you, you, I know you ought to be on your feet for your pastor of the Augusta Church. Hallelujah.
thank God for him, his lovely lady sister, King Cannon. Every time I come up here, they make me feel so welcome. Like, I mean, we went out to eat one time. And, I mean, you know how you can talk, you can be around some people and y'all ain't got nothing to talk about. It's like, ah, uh, you just trying to figure out what to talk about. It ain't like that with him. I mean, you can just sit down and just talk and be free and just enjoy God. And I thank God for both of them always welcoming me into their church. I thank God for them. Thank God for all these great hosts of elders being with us on tonight. Thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for my wife and my kids in her absence. Thank God for her. She's at the house right now. Any day she couldn't travel, she wanted to come, but she nine months, she real big, and she can't come right now. Any day she can drop. Any day. And she ready to get it over with, too. But I thank God for her. I love her. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. If it wasn't for her pushing me and keeping me in check, I wouldn't be here right now. So I love her. I told her I'm going to send her a shout out. I always want to do that. Send a shout out. I love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for my brother and my sister-in-law driving 14 hours. Just got here a couple hours ago. And that church, thank God for, for him. He always, whenever God speaks something to me, I always call him. I told him I was going to say it. I always call him. I had this dream. One day, and then I'm getting ready to preach. I won't be before you long. And I seen, I was in the back church, and there was a window in the church, and I was looking out of the window. But when I looked, I seen dead bodies, like stacked up, just everywhere. I mean, high as the, you could see. But I came out of the church, and I seen this woman laying dead on the table. So I walked and rushed through the back door and I seen a lot of people running in. They was moving real fast. And they was dressed up in suits and they was, what I'm talking about, they was like excited. And I was like, what's going on? So I made a beeline and ran inside the church to see what was going on. And the pastor of the church met me at the door with a cake. Said, what do that mean? I'm talking people going crazy in the church. So packed you couldn't get in. They all in the middle of the, on the outside. So I woke up at the dream. God said, call your brother. Because I believe he got a, a gift of interpreting dreams. But he do. And I called him. I told him the dream. He said, God said that the preachers are sweet talking to people into the church. That's what the cake meant. They standing at the door with the cake, sweet talking, telling you what you want to hear, but not telling you what you need to hear. And so I thank God for him and his wife traveling all that way just to come here. Oh, nobody tears. Thank God for, for each and every one of you pressing your way out on this beautiful Wednesday night, but we're not going to prolong the time on tonight. I had a dream last night while I was in the hotel, and this real, this ain't no lie or nothing. This lady had died, and she was in the grave. I mean, Rick and Morty's dead, everything. And I came into the, wherever it was, she was laying in the, in the grave. I mean, they were throwing dirt on top of her. I mean, dead as a doughnut. And I walked in. And all of a sudden, the lady started coming back to life. And I spoke. I said, you shall live and not die. And the lady came back to life. God is getting ready to do something for the people of God like you never. This, this was last night. I woke up out the dream. I mean, spoke to the body and the body came back alive. Not only natural, but spiritually, God finna do it. 
Watch what I tell you. I'm talking about it. it he just, I asked him yesterday. I said, Lord, show me, show me something. And he showed me that last night. I mean, dead, they was throwing dirt in the dream. They was throwing dirt on the woman. And I walked in and spoke to the body and said, you should live and not die. She got up and ran over and hugged me and went on about her business, alive again. I'm talking her, her, you know how when you die, your face got the bones and stuff sticking out and everything came back in place. And she jumped up out the grave. Jumped up out the grave and hugged me. Went on by the way and I woke up out the dream. God is getting ready to do something. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do something. I knew, I knew something was funny because on the way up here, I told a uh, little brother right there, I said, man, something hit me just like I couldn't talk. Lock my jaws up. I ain't never had, I mean, lock my, I mean, both sides of my jaws just locked up. I was like, nah, devil, you ain't nothing but a lie. I said, I'm going to scream so loud tonight to where they're going to pop back in place, whatever you're trying to do. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to get this word out tonight. I'm devil ain't nothing, nothing but a lie. But ain't nobody but God. God spoke to me and told me that I'm going to preach in a minute. He said, stand for the truth or either die for a lie. I came in the hotel room and he spoke. Cause a lot of us, we, we, that's why I'm saying we. But a lot of us, we don't understand that we in the last hour. We don't understand. It's, 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 it's like you can do what you want to do. It's like this. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, what people really don't understand is you think like it might be 11 o'clock outside. Just for example, 11 o'clock outside, you think that you got to 1101, but you don't know from the foundation of the world what day God going to require your soul. So you play up until 11 o'clock, but you don't know 1101 might be your hour. You might have bitterness, unforgiveness, lust, pride, arrogance, jealousy, mad, mean, everything. But you, you thinking you got to 1101, but not knowing 1101 is your cutoff date, naturally and spiritually. Because he don't just have to cut you off naturally. He'll cut you off spiritually. But everybody think they got time. Saul didn't have time. Saul didn't have time. God cut him off, put an evil spirit up on him. He giving us an opportunity in this hour. I just believe every day. I told my wife, I said, that's why I don't hold nothing on if, if anything happened, I'm quick ask for forgiveness because I, I got such a fear because you don't you don't know you don't know you don't know you don't know God's ways. So you walk out the house, you just had an argument or you was on the job, you think you gonna make it to a level more one and all of a sudden God say, Okay, you ain't nothing but a fool. I require your soul today. But not me. I'm keep my heart right, asking for forgiveness. A lot of us holding forgiveness, holding anger, holding lust and pride. A lot of us on that Facebook like crazy. You demon possessed on the Facebook. So you can't preach on nothing you ain't delivered from. God delivered me for, I'm, I know for a fact. I wasn't on there watching like crazy stuff. But the Bible said don't set no evil thing before your eyes. There's no way you can be a pure man of God, a pure woman, a Jesus woman. And be on Facebook looking at lust and 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 men and and I'm talking about you just de and everybody busy. That's a busy body spirit. That's a gossiping spirit. You know everybody business, so you can't come to church and be pure no more because you messed up. Now when you come to church, you looking at them. Boy, I seen them on Facebook. They were doing so. You used to be pure. God told me. He said, cut that junk off. It's just like drinking, smoking. Or anything, I ain't never going back to that again. Because it's bondage. You can't even think pure. You can't even think right. On the pure heart, you see his face. Your heart can't be pure no more because your heart, you, God don't have your heart no more. Everything else got your heart. Because you know we quick. I'm thinking ready to preach. But you know we quick to say, God know my heart. Let me show you something about the heart. Let me show you something. 
God said, I won't write my laws on tables of stone no more, but I write them on the fleshly tables of your heart. Remember that now. The Bible say, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Bible say, the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light. Now remember the law, he put it in your heart. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Jesus said that I don't come to destroy the law, I come to fulfill it. The Bible say the law is holy, just, and good. So anytime you want to say you ain't up on the law ain't nothing but his word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The law ain't nothing but his word. So anytime you say you don't want to be up on the law, you say you don't want God in your heart. You know how God going to know he is? Because he is the word and he is the law. So he only put his law in his people. So if, he, if, if you don't have his law, his word in you, he going to know that that ain't none of mine. So ain't no way you talking about you you save and fill with the Holy Ghost. You can't even have the Holy Ghost without having the law. So how in the world, how in the world you ain't up under the law no more? How in the world you don't have to, you don't you, you can wear your pants, woman. You could dress, you could dress like a, a, a woman man. You could be a homosexual, a lesbian, you could be mad, angry, bitter, unforgiveness. You ain't got the law. You ain't got the word in you. <laughs> Cause if a, if you are forgiven, your father in heaven won't forgive you. How many people holding unforgiveness right now? This ain't what I'm gonna preach on though. But how many people holding unforgiveness right now? I mean, right now, somebody did something to you on the job. Somebody did something to you in your house. Somebody did something to you 15, 20 years ago, and you ain't let it go yet. You may, you can't even come to church and look at nobody. You can't look nobody in the eyes no more. You can't do none of that because you got something inside your heart. But if you had God law, can't no two two can't walk together except they agree. And sweet and bitter water can't proceed out the same fountain. So if you had nothing but that law in your heart, can't nothing else abide in there but Him. So once something else enters in, you ain't got Him like that no more. He'll give you an opportunity to get free. He'll give you an opportunity to, to, to get it right. But if you don't get it right, if you want to be filthy, I'm going to leave you filthy still. But Amos, the, the seventh chapter, starting at the, the tenth verse. Amos. Amos, the seventh chapter, starting at the tenth verse. God spoke to me because I went through something the other week. <clears throat> because, see, people don't want you to preach this word no more. I went through some, boy, I went through such a mind battle. Like, it lasted for like two weeks. I was like, oh, I did. I'm thinking I hurt people's feelings. And, like, I mean, it was just, it was a spirit, though. It was God just showing me something. But I went through such a, a, a mind battle. I never went through it like that. For, Ministering the word that I had ministered, how you could feel the fight a couple weeks ago. And God spoke to me. He said, can you let me use you to the point where it's not pleasing to man, but pleasing to me, God. Because you start asking like, I be asking my wife, uh, you felt that word? Did, 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 was it an anointing up in there? With, with, and she just gonna tell you straight up. Now what you talking about? You ain't did nothing. That's her. She gonna tell you that. My sister them know I ain't lying. Oh boy, you ain't did nothing. You ain't did nothing. You ain't, you ain't did nothing. But not in that kind of way, in a good way. If you understand what I'm saying. Amos seven and ten. We're gonna get on into it. Then Emma, Amaziah, the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, said Amos had conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. And the land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go flee thee away into the land of Judah. 
and there eat bread and prophesy there but prophesy not again anymore at Bethel for it is the king's chapel and it is the king's court then answered Amos and said to Amaziah I was no prophet neither was I a prophet's son now watch what I'm getting ready to show you on tonight watch this let me read it again then answered Amos and said unto Amaziah I was no prophet brother Tans was no prophet he was if a lot of y'all don't know my testimony I was just riding in the car one night on Interstate 10 and all of a sudden a legion of demons was on my passenger side seat. I wasn't looking to be saved, didn't want to be saved. Matter of fact, I was enjoying everything I was doing. Didn't ask for nothing. Watch this. I prop uh, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me. He'll come and take you when it's your time. As I followed the flock, this man wasn't doing nothing. I mean, this man was just out there keeping the sheep. I mean, he was minding his own business. But at that time, God said, okay, it's time. I'm coming. See, a lot of us, when it's your time, it's your time. And can't nobody stop that. Go prophesy unto my people, Israel. 1 Corinthians 1 and 26. It's going to come together. 1 Corinthians 1. In 26. 1 and 26. Hallelujah. For ye, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh shall glory in his presence. I got like this short scripture. Acts 9 and 1. Acts 9 and 1. If you read that Old Testament in 1 Kings around the 16th, 17th, 18th on up, you will see they always tried to shut the mouth of the prophet. They tried to do it to Elijah, Elisha, they tried to do it to Micaiah, but Micaiah told him, he said, I'm going to speak what thus says the Lord. As long as the Lord liveth, I'm going to speak it. They came to him and told, told him, one of the little servants came to him when, when I believe it was Ahab was there, uh, uh, he was with Je uh, Jehoshaphat. He said, all these prophets, when they were getting ready to go up to Raymond Gillian, he told him, he said, 400 prophets now, then prophesied good. He said, and all prophesied good. He said, when you come up before the king, they don't want to call, so we need you to prophesy the same thing. Micaiah said, as long as the Lord live it, I'm going to say what God say. When he got up there, he told him, go ahead, you're going to prosper. He said, uh, he said, nah, that ain't it. He said, how many times I got to adjure you for you to tell me the truth on what God say? He said, okay. He said, you want to know? That's when he told him that dream. He said, I seen the Lord sitting on his throne and the host of heaven. And one sat on this manner and the other sat on that manner. And God said, the Lord said, who would go up and persuade Ahab the, that he should go to Ramah Gilead and fall. And the Bible said, a lying spirit stepped forward and said, i go. He said, how you gonna go? He said, I'm gonna go as a lying spirit in the mouth of all this prophets. In the mouth of all this prophets. See, we don't under we we don't, we listen to anybody. We go anywhere just because you see a sign in the one that don't mean nothing. If they ain't walking in the word, walking upright, and you should have a spirit of discernment by now, if you get in the word to be able to catch them, you would know if they in the word or not. Don't look at the prophecy and all that. Look at the life. 
But ain't nobody bold no more. But Micaiah, boy, I, I, I read that by, I know by three weeks straight, just reading on Micaiah. I'm talking about this man, he was bold. He didn't care about nothing. Elijah was, Elisha, Elijah was bold too till he ran in that cave. Scared. How all of a sudden you just out here mocking these people? Tell me, I guess your God sleep. I guess he can't do nothing. Then all of a sudden, the next verse, you run in the cave. Tell me, I want to die. Just take my life. What? What in the world? Okay, then. You know what I'm going to do for you? Uh, go anoint Elijah, and he shall stand in your room. Acts 9, 1 and 16. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of, his, of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou Lord and the Lord said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and he trembled and astonished said Lord what wilt thou have me to do and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which sojourned with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Skip down to the 11th verse. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tartus. For behold, he prayed and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Watch this. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the king and the children of Israel. 1 King 19. And one more scripture. And that's it. 1 King 19 and 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba which belonged to Judah and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a ju juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is enough see right now you're going to have to be bold in this hour you're going to have to be real bold because they don't want you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ what you going to do when they come up to you and tell you you can't say the name Jesus no more I'm talking what they going to say but you got to understand when God choose you he give you and put a word in your mouth and you get protection from God and when he saw that he arose and went for his life. Wrong verse. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life. For I am not better than my father's. 
Last and final verse, same chapter, first King twenty second chapter. Start at first. Start at one. Yeah, let's start at one. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down. Now watch this. Now you up. Now you coming down to somebody that don't have no, you don't have no reason being around. God then, then bless you, moving for you. Now you ready to come down. See, you chosen, but they ain't chosen. You come down to them, and God getting ready to whoop you. Whatever God tell you to do, whatever he say, you got to obey that. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Raymond Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Would thou go with me to the battle? To Raymond Gilead, he wants somebody to go to him because he know he can't go with himself. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I'm, uh, I'm as thou art. How you become like he is? A backsliding preacher, but you like him now. I'm, I'm as thou art. My people as thy people. My horses, he done went so low time at the horses just like. My horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets. Watch this. Together, about 400 men. He didn't say false prophets. He said prophets. But God put something on these prophets. Because he wanted to trick somebody. Together, about 400 men. And said unto them, Shall I go against Raymond Gilead? to battle or shall I forbear and they said go up for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king now why Jehoshaphat got discernment I'm getting ready to preach and Jehoshaphat got discernment now watch what he asked in this next verse cause he knew something wasn't right he knew something had 400 of y'all and all y'all agree with the same thing no can I get one bring me somebody else and Jehoshaphat said, Is that not he a prophet of the Lord? Now watch what he's saying. Is it not a prophet of the Lord? He ain't say these were prophets of the Lord. Besides that we might inquire of him. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet ten men. There is yet twenty men. One man. Micaiah, a soldier, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. They hate the real prophet. They don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Nothing. He, he always prophesying evil. He telling her that God is getting rid of army tanks and this, that, this, and that getting rid of heaven. But you don't understand. They trying to get you into a realm where you can get into a realm where God starts seeking God so it won't come up on you unaware. But I hate him. He hate this man. For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten, hither Micaiah the son of Imla, the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah, set each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place. You know void is a place that don't mean nothing. You know who doing this? The backsliding preacher trying to hide. He in a void. He in he in an old dark place. Come on over here, put your king out there. Cause I don't want nobody to see me. Cause I'm getting ready to go out here and I'm getting ready to disguise myself. That's what they're doing right now, disguising themselves. And if you don't have a spirit of discernment in this hour, you'll never be able to catch them. Cause if it was possible, they'd deceive the very elect. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat 
the king of Judah set each on his throne. Have them put on their robes. Because he don't want them to put on the robe without him. Watch. In a broad place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chana, made him horns of iron. And he said, Thus says the Lord. Now look at this. God ain't saying nothing. Then he went and got some horns to try to make it look like theatrical. How they do right now, they do all kind of crazy stuff to make you think if they can get your eyes, they can get everything else. Watch this. It's getting ready to get good. Thus said the Lord, with this shut thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them just a line. And all the prophets prophesied. They seen him up there prophesying, so they wanted to join in too. And all the prophets prophesied, so saying, Go up to reign McGillian and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was going to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Look at him trying to put this fear in him. Watch. Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. So he came, just bear with me, let me read the. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramah Gilead to battle? Or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing? But that is true in the name of the Lord. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills. Now this is the true word he's getting ready to give him right here. As the sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did not I tell you that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Raymond Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Where with? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt pers persuade him and prevail. Also go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lion spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee Father in the name of Jesus Lord I ask that you forgive sin in my life Lord right now Lord I ask that you let such an anointing rest in this place like never before Lord give me fit words fitly spoken like apples of gold and pictures of silver that the gainsayer can't gainsay nor resist Lord give me sound speech Lord because I don't know what to do, don't know what to say, don't know which way to go. Forgive me, Lord. Search my heart. Cleanse me. Create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Let anointing rest upon your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. God spoke this word to me. Bye. Three weeks ago, like for, for, for like three weeks straight, 
he had me reading first king just like on the bible tapes in the bible just over and over and over again and i was like lord what you want me to say Cause I, I just they came to the point now to where lord whatever you want me to say however you want to use me just just use me i just want to be used but he spoke this word to me. Then he spoke something to me today. He said, in this hour, you're going to have to be a real soldier. Because right now, they're trying to shut the mouth, not only of the prophets, but they're trying to shut the mouth of the children of God. They don't want you to say nothing about fornication and adultery. They don't want you to say nothing about backbiting and gossiping and lusting and your porno and the masturbate. I mean, they don't want you to say anger, frustration, bitterness, unforgiveness. Everybody you talk to, what they want you to do, oh, you can't judge your God. You can't judge nobody. You, know, you, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. But no, God didn't mean it in that way to my judging you. But like the man of God always say, you can be a fruit inspector. Because why would God make us preachers and children of God if we didn't come up against evil. If we just let it slide like it ain't no big deal, you don't never post say nothing about a person, homosexuality, lesbianism, pride, and arrogance. Well, what's the use in preaching for? You don't even need a preacher. You might well just let them do what they want to do. But God spoke to me and I believe what God getting ready to do in this hour, he getting ready to turn the tides. I'm talking about things is getting ready to change in this hour. I'm talking about it's going to be a changing of God's God getting ready to move like you ain't never seen. So you're going to have to listen to what I'm getting ready to preach on tonight because you need strength to be able to stand up against the enemy because what he's trying to do, he's trying to shut your mouth. He don't want you to say nothing. He want to bag you up in a corner and make you sit down and feel bad like uh, you didn't hurt somebody's feelings like uh, you don't supposed to say nothing about sin. How in the world are you going to know your sin? If don't nobody see you. If you don't have a preacher, how in the world are you going to know that? How in the world are you going to hear if you don't have a preacher? But what God doing in this hour, I'm talking about right now in this hour, he getting ready to raise up a people that ain't going to care what nobody saying. They ain't going to care what nobody talking about. I'm talking about they going to stand up for the word of God to the fullest. Now the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was and not anything made that was made in him was life and that life was the light of all men the Bible says light shining in darkness and darkness comprehended it not then another scripture say my son attend to my words and climb thy ears unto my sands let them not depart from thy eyes but keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they shall be life to all that find them and the health to all their flesh. But right now, ain't nobody keeping his word in this hour because you know what's going on? Everybody bagging up from the word of God, everybody taking down because they don't want to be the one that prophesied evil. They don't want to be the one that go tell somebody God getting ready to hit that city, he getting ready to hit that state, he getting ready to hit that house. Everybody want to hear something good in this hour, but God is looking for some real soldiers in this hour that going to be able to stand up for the word of God. I told God this morning, I said, God, whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to say, I don't care if I can't hardly open my mouth. I don't care how the enemy trying to hit me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do just like you said and obey your word. I want to be like them prophets of old. I'm talking about you had some real soldiers in them hours. I'm talking about back in them days. I'm talking about they didn't take down. I'm talking about they said as long as the Lord lived it. I'm going to say what God say. How many of us are can lift our hands right now and say, whatever God say, I'm going to say, you remember, I want to take you on a journey right now. I want to take you back to when God first saved you. I'm talking about, it didn't matter what nobody was saying about you. Matter of fact, when you first got saved, then nothing else matter but Jesus. I'm talking about, whatever God told you to speak it, you were saying it. I'm talking about, God could tell you to go over there to Walmart and sit in the parking lot and wait three hours in your car because he had somebody he wanted you to prophesy to and he wanted you to 
to tell them that I'm getting ready to move for them. I'm getting ready to heal their body. I'm getting ready to heal their mind. I'm getting ready to heal their spirit. But somewhere down the line, somebody been preaching to you and telling you that you don't need holy boldness no more. That you don't got to stand up for the word of God. That God know my heart. That God know you can't judge me. Don't say nothing about my sin. Don't tell me that I'm at home masturbating and watching porn. Don't tell me that I'm evil. Don't tell me that I'm on Facebook too much. Don't tell me that I'm a gossiper. Don't tell me that. You know what people want in this hour? They just want to do whatever they want to do. Like they used to say back in the day, they want to be loose as a goose. Everybody want to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, at the time that they want to do it. But in God, you can't do it like that. Because the Bible says, in Him we move, we live and move and have our being here. If you understood who God was, like I told you earlier, if you had the law inside of your heart, I'm talking about uh, God don't give us the spirit of fear, but a power of love uh, and of a sound mind. You know what you'll do to the devil? You'll look to the, you'll look at the devil and tell the devil back up because uh, I'm talking about you can't shut my mouth. You can't stop me uh, from preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about, just imagine, just pay attention tonight, uh, just imagine, just watch this, uh, just imagine, if you shut your mouth, you might got a family member, you might got somebody out there right now, uh, I'm talking about that's finna commit sin, that's getting ready to die in sin, uh, but you shut your mouth because uh, you don't want to hurt their feelings, you don't want to tell them uh, that they can't live in the world, uh, you, you don't want to tell them that you can't walk together, except they agree, you don't want to tell them uh, that sweet and bitter water can't proceed uh, out of the same fountain. But oh, you got to stand up for the truth in this hour. God spoke to me, said, Stand up for the truth, or you gonna die for a lie. That means um, automatically you gonna step in a lie because if you don't want the truth and you don't want to speak the truth, then a lie coming for you too because it know you ain't got no holy boldness. It know that you scared to preach the word of God. It know that you scared to tell your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother to do right. Somebody go stand up for the truth because the Bible say Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. You know what I'm trying to do in this hour? I'm trying to get fortified with the God, with God inside of me. You know what God said? Submit yourself. Therefore, God resist the devil, and he got the flee. The only way you can speak the truth is by being in the truth. I'm talking about how many people in the truth right now? I'm talking about how many people want to walk up right in this hour? I'm talking about how many people are preaching the true word of God now? You know what we're doing in this hour? We're running everywhere just to get a word. We don't care if they false prophets, all we want is the signs and miracles and the wonders. All we want is somebody to give us a word. But I tell you something, if you get in that word, you will become the word. And don't nobody have to speak the word to you because you are the word. But you know what we're doing in this hour? We're sitting around wanting everybody to patty cake us. No, I don't want nobody to patty cake me in this hour because things are getting ready to get real. Things are getting ready to get rough. Things are getting ready to get bad. I'm talking about you're going to have to have some Holy Ghost inside of your soul in this hour. I'm talking about you've been talking about you coming to church. You've been talking about you obeying God. You're talking about you waking up in the morning. You're talking about I'm talking about you talking about you praying for an hour every morning. You know what God getting ready to do? He getting ready to try your heart. You know why he took the children of Israel through the wilderness for 40 years? You know why? To honor them, to prove them, to see what was in their heart because uh, he already know in the last hour, I'm talking about in this last hour, in this last hour that we in right now, I know you might have heard it when you was a little kid. Uh, I know you might have heard it that man Jesus uh, is getting ready to return. You know how they used to tell us uh, back in the day, but you don't understand how close uh, of a time it is right now. I know it don't mean nothing uh, to some people because uh, you already out there, you already gone, but to the soldiers, uh, to the ones that want to obey God, uh, on tonight we're going to get on this altar and we go cry to God and tell God, Lord, I want to return unto thee. I know I'm messed up. I know I'm torn up. I know I'm at the house watching porn or I'm masturbating. I know I'm angry with that sister that's sitting right next to me in church. I know I'm frustrated. I know I'm bitter. I know I'm unforgiving. Uh-uh. But on tonight, you're going to have to search your soul. You're going to have to ask God, Lord, whatever it is inside of me, Lord, please take it out. I'm tired of coming to church and being a church house hypocrite. See, see what you want to do. You want to go get that good word like they told you not too long. Like that word just said, you want to hear something sweet that's going to tickle your ear. But oh, if somebody tickle your ear, then you know what they ain't doing? They ain't going down deep inside.
out of your soul and getting them demons, those familiar spirits up out of you. You know what I want God to do in this hour? I want God to get every familiar spirit, every childhood demon, every, uh, uh, every unforgiven demon. I'm talking about if you know, raise your hands and look at your neighbor and say, I got to get it out. See, what you don't understand in this hour, God is getting ready to take us back to that place where we first received him. God getting ready to take us back to that place where we was hungry, we was thirsting after him. I'm talking about you looking at a man that was addicted to cocaine from the age of 14 years old. I'm talking about smoking. I'm talking about doing everything. I'm talking about popping over 100 pills a week. But I'm going to show you something on tonight. I don't care what they say. God used the foolish things to confound the wise. See, don't let nobody tell you. Don't let nobody try to stop you. When God chose you, many are called, but few are chosen. When God chose you, you know what he do? He put a stamp on top of you. He put a chosen vessel on top of you. I'm talking about he put something up on you that the enemy already know. Why you think you're going through them trials? Why you think you're going through the tribulation? Why you think you're going through the heartache and the pain? Why in the world you think you're going through that? Because uh -uh, if you wasn't chosen, ain't no use for you going through that. You know he, uh -uh, you understand you know what he do? He chastise them that he love. See, you worrying about the chastising and you worrying about what God's sending you through but you don't understand. It's to take you to another level in God. It's to take you to another dimension in him. You know what I want to do in this hour? I want to get in that dimension with God where the wicked one touches me not because I'm tired of falling for the same old thing. I'm talking about I'm tired of getting angry at the house. I'm tired of getting angry on the job. I'm talking about I'm tired of being angry with the church folks. I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about all tonight. So you got to understand what God. Hallelujah. That sounds better. See, what you don't understand in this hour, what you're going to have to understand in this hour, God is getting ready to take us to a whole nother realm in him. And I'm the first candidate because every morning I'm waking up asking God, Lord, whatever it is inside of me, I want you to search my heart, search my mind. I want you to search my soul because you know what I want in this hour? I want to be like Jesus. I'm talking about we used to have a dream. I want to be like Jesus. I'm talking about we used to wake up in the morning and uh, we you picked up your Bible, I'm talking about could nobody stop you from going in your prayer room. I'm talking about your kids wasn't getting on your nerves so bad enough that you couldn't go give God an hour of prayer. But how many times this week have you woke up and prayed an hour? I'm talking about how many times you know what we do right now? We give God that 15 minute prostitute prayer. We go up in there, Lord, I need you, Lord, I thank you, give me this and give me that. And then you act the door, but no. I'm talking about you remember when you was on the altar and you was crying out to God when everything didn't matter. If one nobody else in the church, it didn't matter. If one nobody else in the house of God, you was going to be there. Matter of fact, I was sitting on the outside waiting on the doors to open because I knew I had to have God. I knew the life that I had came out of. There wasn't no way I could return. He said, if any man put his hand to the plow and look back, he ain't fit for the kingdom of God. You remember how God saved you? You remember how you was in that crazy house? You remember how you had counseling your body. You remember how you had lost your mind? I'm getting ready to make you remember on tonight. Because somebody that forgot who they was. You done forgot who you used to be. But on tonight, God getting ready to restore everything in your life. If you hungry for this word and you want God tonight, I just believe God getting ready to do something for us like you ain't never seen. I believe God is getting ready to pour out that same anointing that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He said it should also quicken our mortal about it. So you want to be like Jesus again? You know what it's going to take? It's going to take the same dedication that you had from the beginning. As a matter of fact, it's going to take 150% this time. Because last time, so when you jump out of God, you get seven more demons that come upon you. But after today, I rebuke every spirit, every unclean demon that's in your life. You know what God getting ready to do? I just feel a restoration. I feel a word that's getting ready to fall up in this place. I feel a cry. I feel a hunger. I feel a thirst up in this place. I feel like somebody ready to come back to God with their hands lifted telling God, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I need you. Lord, I know I messed up. I know I was out there. I know I was messed up. I know I've been home on it. I know I've been fornicating. I know I've been committing adultery. But after tonight, Lord, if you could give me another chance and create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Lord, I give you everything that I have on tonight. Lord, I give you my mind, my body, and I give you my soul.
soul, but you know what I want on, on this hour? I don't just want that. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be transformed into the image and likeness of his son. Because when he made me, he gave me dominion and power over all the fowls of the air and over all the beasts of the field. He gave me something. He gave me the same power that he gave Jesus when he resurrected him. I'm talking about you got greater as he that is in you than he that is in the world living inside of you. You got the great I am. I'm talking about you got the king of kings and lord of lords living in the inside of you. See, I don't care what type of devil trying to come up against you. You better look at the devil. I told him out of the tent. I said, I feel like a possum McCoy. I said, you better put your hands on your hip and let your backbone slip and tell every devil to zip his lip. I don't care what you want to do on tonight. God is getting ready for restoration. If you want restoration, lift your hands. I don't care who's sitting next to you. You better lift your hands and tell God, I know I done fell off in this hour. I know I'm not doing the same things I used to do. I know I done messed up. I know I done took down. But oh, tonight God is giving you another opportunity. The enemy ain't going to shut your mouth no more. You're getting ready to speak. Thus says the Lord. If you want thus says the Lord. If you want thus says the Lord. If you want thus says the Lord. You know how you get thus says the Lord. The Bible say in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him. Word was life. And that life was the life of all men. Light shining in darkness. I see a bunch of lights up in here. It's getting ready to light up again. I'm talking about any type of darkness here, God. I want you to remove every ounce of darkness out of my life tonight. Lord, I'm going to be honest with you. Because Bible say, confession is made unto salvation. If you confess you want to another, he's faithful and just to forgive you for your sins. I'm talking about how many need to confess to God tonight. I'm talking about be honest. It's an honest night tonight. I'm talking about Brother Terrence got some stuff that he need to get out of him. I'm talking about I'm tired of anger. I'm tired of frustration. I'm tired of getting mad. I'm tired of being shrewd. I'm tired of stuff that's creeping up in my life over and over again. You know what you got to do? You got to stay steadfast and I'm moving you got to get planted in the house of God. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walking not in the council of the ungodly, nor standing in the world of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scoffer, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law that he meditate both day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Don't nobody want to be planted no more. Jesus said, I need trees of righteousness. I need the planting of the Lord. How many planted in the house anymore? I'm talking about, you ain't going to let that sister that's getting on your nerve move. You no more. I'm talking about you ain't gonna let that man on your job get on your nerves when you going to work cussing them out, man, cussing them out, woman. I'm talking about you ain't gonna let that man call your house no more after 12 o'clock talking about can I come over and watch TV? I'm talking about you getting ready to get steadfast and unmovable. I'm talking about you getting ready to get, you getting ready to get that crowd back like you used to have because if you don't get it back, I'm talking about he gonna be able to deceive the very elect. You gotta get that hunger. You gotta get that thirst. You gotta get that boldness again. I'm talking about just like a lion out of the tribe of Judah. You know what I want in this hour? I want to be just like Jesus. The servant can't be above the master. Neither the disciple above his Lord, but he shall be as a master. He shall be as the Lord. You know what I want in this hour? In me, you live, you move, and have your being. I don't help. I don't know how you want to move, but I want to move in him because the only protection is in him. The only joy is in him. The only the only righteousness is in him. See, don't nobody want to be righteous no more because you got to do the right thing. You got to let that mama go, that sister go. You got to let that brother go. You got to let that boyfriend go. You can't be shacking off. Oh, you can't be watching your porn on masturbate. You can't be going off on your wife. I mean, you can't be going off on your husband. You you got to submit yourself. If you're going to stay in the world, if you're going to be inside of him, you got to submit yourself. You know what God's trying to do? He's trying to find a bunch of people that's willing to submit themselves. See, the, uh, the only time the devil flew from you is if you submit yourself. You ain't submitting yourself because you want to do what you want to do in the church. You want to leave at the church, do what you want to do in your home. But you can't do nothing. You can't do what you want to do nowhere. You got to take some orders in this hour. You know what God getting ready to do. He can ready to raise up some bold soldiers. I told God, I said, give me that spirit like Micaiah had. I want that thing 
ain't like Micaiah. And I say, whatever God say, I'm getting ready to speak it because you don't know a detriment might be getting ready to happen in your home. A detriment might be getting ready to happen in your body. And you know what I want to be able to tell you? Just says the Lord, come out of your hell and repent and tell God, Lord, whatever's inside of me, I ask for forgiveness. I want to bring you back to the foot of the cross. I want to bring you back to the foot of the cross. I want to cry to come back in you. I'm talking about you know who he's drawn to? He's drawn to them of a broken and contrite spirit, a broken and contrite heart. When the last time you cried, when the last time tears rolled down your eyes, but you full of jealousy, you full of pride and arrogance, you don't even know how to humble yourself no more. Uh-uh, you better humble yourself because, see, you don't understand, you think you somebody, but God can stop your heart from beating right now. God can stop your heart from beating right now. But you sitting up like you the man. You sitting up like you the woman. You sitting up like you know you going to live tomorrow. Uh-uh, he told you. And he told me tomorrow and I promise to no man. I'm talking about your bank account fool. But I ain't never seen a man go take the bank out the ground and throw it in the grave. So you don't understand what God is doing. And this hour, he's taking us back to that place where we first received him. When God first saved me, I was so hungry. I'm talking about traveling up and down the highways. I'm talking about people told me you ain't got to trust God like that. But oh, you know what I was doing? I kept on crying, kept on moving. I'm talking about sitting on that front row crying out to God. Every time I get in church, I had to change church when I get home because I'd be filled with tears. Do you remember that time in your life? Do you remember that hunger in your life? I'm talking about somebody was going through and you had a spirit of discernment. You would pick it up, lay your hands on them and say, this says the Lord, thou shalt be healed. Somebody get ready to get something in this hour will see. I just don't want to be an ordinary preacher. I just don't want to be normal. I don't want to be like nobody else. Every day I tell God, don't let me be like no other preacher, no other prophet on the face of this earth. Let me be whatever you want me to be. Whatever your will say that I am, that's what I want to be. I want to be just like Jesus. I want to walk the earth. I want somebody to be able to touch the hem of my garment and be made whole. You remember when you had that hunger inside of you? I want somebody to be able. I want to be able to lay my hands on the blind eyes and they open back up. You know what I want? Somebody body cut open with cancer. You know what I want to be able to do? I want to be able to speak to that body and curse that cancer and say, go back where you came from. Ow! So you don't understand. God is getting ready to raise up people up, but you got to get hungry again. Got to get hungry. You got to get hungry again. You got to get hungry again. He can't find no hungry people. Ain't nobody going to cook nothing and put nothing on the table if he ain't hungry. Mama ain't going to, mama not going to come to the house and cook, and cook a, a big T-bone steak. She ain't going to come to the house and cook one of them good potatoes because you know us people, we love a good steak and potatoes. You know, mama ain't going to cook no, no steak and potatoes if ain't nobody coming to the, to the table and eat. So you know why you ain't eating? You know why you ain't eating? Because you ain't hungry enough. You ain't thirsty enough to drink no big glass of Kool-Aid. So mama ain't making no Kool-Aid for you because you ain't thirsty enough for me. She better put the whole picture out there because you know what I'm getting ready to do? Eat the steak and I'm going to eat yours too. I'm going to tell my brother move on over because you know what I want? I got an appetite for two steaks tonight. I want two of them. See, you don't understand who God is. God is trying to fill us up again. He's trying to get us hungry again. He's trying to put that word back in us again. I'm talking about man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We don't have no word to make us proceed no more because we didn't stop. I'm talking about we said we getting ready to celebrate Christmas. We getting ready to celebrate Easter. But you call yourself a child of God. I'm talking about you call yourself somebody that's walking in that bed. But you don't understand. Whatever God will say, that's what you got to do. Whatever God will say, that's how you got to obey. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. I know somebody don't want to hear that, but you when you need to go home, chop down your Christmas tree and throw it in the fire because God said, uh-uh, that's an abomination. See, you don't want to hear none of that. You want somebody to prophesy and tell you that Rudolph getting ready to roll up in here with a big red nose and the uh, Santa Claus getting ready to fly up here and jump off the top of that balcony and drop everybody a gift up in this place. That devil ain't nothing but a lie. 
I don't want nothing but one gift, and that's the gift of the Holy Ghost. The devil ain't nothing but a lie. He said, you shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I mean, remember having that real Holy Ghost, having that real power. Then nothing else matter about you. All you wanted to do was have the Holy Ghost. All you wanted was that power. All you wanted was that anointing. All you wanted was the glory of God upon your life. But somebody that messed up because they had to turn their back. But tonight is your night to get restored. You better lift your hands and tell God, I got to get restored on tonight. I got to get my power on tonight. I got to get my joy on tonight. I need my joy back from you, Lord. I done messed up. I done messed up. But I know what you're getting ready to do. You're getting ready to replace my joy. You're getting ready to take me again and restore unto me the joy of my salvation. There's somebody up in here tonight. They hungry for the word of God. God looking for hungry people. I don't want nobody that's skinny. I want somebody that want to get fat. If you want to get fat for the Holy Ghost, then lift your hands tonight. If you want to get fat with the anointing tonight, then lift your hands tonight. Somebody want to get fat and full tonight. Because I'm tired of being skinny. Every little child that come and knock me over. Because I ain't got no meat on my bones. But you know what God getting ready to do? He getting ready to tell you to go back in your prayer. God spoke to me the other day. He said, your all is your, your all. Your prayer is your all. He said, don't get caught with that. You better not get caught with that your prayer life. You better not get caught with that your dedication and your consecration. You better not get caught with that. Some of y'all done went through too many times before. You ought to be able to tell somebody else. God is getting ready to restore you because you didn't be restored. You better not mess up again. Because you don't know when it's your last time. I don't want tonight to be my last time. I don't want tonight to be my last opportunity to get it right with God. He get ready to warn somebody and tell you to come from amongst him and be you separate, said the Lord. Evil communication, corrupt good matter. The wrath of God comes up on the children of disobedience. And the ways of sin is still death. The law ain't gonna never change. The word ain't gonna never change. Not for me or not for you. But what I'm getting ready to tell you tonight is God getting ready to pour it out tonight. Lift both of your hands and look at your neighbor. Look at him right in the eyeball. And tell him we getting ready to go higher. I'm getting ready to go higher. Look at your neighbor right in the eyeball. Just touch him on the shoulder.
you the power, the anointing. If you want it, then you will be on your feet. You know about those streets. When you come up out of there, you got to go all the way. God gave you a healing. How in the world are you going to back up? If God gave you deliverance, how in the world are you going to back up on God? Tell God, restore them tears, Lord. Restore my cry, Lord. Enough of you, tanned up my 
church. I done had enough of you all hitting my body. You better look at the devil. When I first got up here, I couldn't even open up my mouth, which y'all didn't even know. My jaws was locked. But look at the Holy Ghost. Wow! somebody that feel like I feel. I need somebody that want to scream until they can't scream no more. I want somebody to scream until heaven come down. I need somebody that's ready to get free. No, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't let nobody tell you. If God ain't being nothing for you, keep your mouth shut. If God ain't being nothing for you, then I want you to keep your mouth shut. If God ain't being nothing for you, I don't want you to open your mouth. If God ain't being nothing for you, then I want you to keep your mouth shut. Oh, let him walk on. Maybe he's got Somebody need God. Somebody need him. If you need him and you need a restoration, meet me at the altar. You better run, 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 run. Come on, cry out to God. Come on, cry out to him tonight. Come on, cry out to the king. Come on. You better tell him, Lord, please, Lord. Lord, I'm not speaking death as a Lord because I'm worried about what people are saying. Lord, I'm worried about what's coming my way. Lord, I don't want to speak because I'm worried about people's feelings, Lord. But you done told me to speak death says the Lord as long as you live. Come on, come on, come on, cry out. Tell God to give you that holy boldness again. Tell him, Lord, let me obey you down to the smallest my new detail. Come on, don't try to use man's wisdom. God said use his wisdom. Use his wisdom, whatever he tell you to do. That's what you got to do, whatever he tell you to go. That's where you got to go. Tell God to restore you. Take me back to that place where I first to see. You better cry out tonight. You better cry out tonight. You better cry out tonight for a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Come on, open up your mouth. 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 
come on cry out come on cry out come on cry out to God come on cry out you're getting ready to get refilled with the Holy Ghost tonight you don't even know what's getting ready to come up on you come on cry out to God you don't know what's getting ready to come up on you the Holy Ghost are refilling the death says the Lord is getting ready to rest up on your heart your mind oh cry out women what a travailing women women what a morning women come on let the enemy hear you mourning. Let him hear you travail. Let him know you got the victory. Let him know Zion. Crowd. Crowd. Tell him to get that porno out of your life. Get that masturbation out of your life. Tell him get this anger out of you, this frustration, this shrewd spirit, this bitterness, this disobedient spirit. Come on, crowd. And tell God to get it out of you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't worry about who next to you cry out to God. A refilling coming for somebody tonight. Somebody been crying out to God. Somebody been crying out to God. Somebody been asking God for another chance. This your, this your opportunity. You wonder why the anointing ain't what it used to be. Because you didn't stop something. You didn't stop praying like you used to pray. You didn't stop seeking them like you used to seek them. Now jealousy has slipped up in your life. Competition has slipped up in your life. Anger because you ain't going nowhere. You slipped up in your life. Cry out to the almighty king and he'll deliver you tonight. Confess it to him. Don't hold nothing in the inside. Let it go tonight. Let it go tonight. Let everything go that's not like him. Let it go. Tell him, Lord, it's me, oh God. They're standing in the need of prayer, Lord. Lord, I need a healing in my mind, Lord. Lord, I need a healing in my spirit, Lord. I want obedience, Lord. But somewhere down the line, I didn't stop, Lord, because of somebody. God is seeking for a man. God is seeking for a man. God is seeking for a man. He's seeking for a woman. He's seeking for a woman. He's seeking for a man. The eyes of the Lord is roaming to and fro, seeking to prove himself mighty on the behalf of them that trust in him. You say you trust in him, but can you trust in him when you're going through that trial? When you can't even feel him, can you trust him? When everybody telling you you ain't got God no more, can you trust them? When the enemy coming in every direction, can you trust them? Can you believe that he'll be with you to the ends of the world? Somebody getting their cry back. Come on, keep pushing, keep pushing, man. Keep pushing, woman. Your tears are right there. You ain't cried in three, three years. You ain't cried in six months. God is trying to restore you tonight. He restoring your cry. He restoring your hunger. He restoring your thirst tonight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Cry out tonight. If you ever was honest with God, just let it, let it out tonight. Lay it on the table. Tell him this is where I'm at, Lord. Lord, and I need your help tonight, Jesus. Lord, this is where I'm at, Lord. You already know everything about me, so ain't no use for me hiding. Please help Terrence Johnson, Lord. Get this anger, Lord. Get this frustration, Lord. Get this bitterness, Lord. Get this jealousy, Lord. Get this competition, Lord. Get this malice, Lord. Get this stuff out of me, Lord. Lord, forgive me for every sin, Lord. Known, unknown, seen, unseen, Jesus. Lord, please, Lord, help me, Lord, please, Jesus. Lord, deliver my soul, Lord, please, Jesus. Lord, deliver my soul, Lord, please, Lord. Lord, take me back to that place where I first received you, Lord. I was so hungry, Lord. Lord, please fill me again, Lord, please, Jesus. Lord, fill us, Lord. Lord, fill us with the Holy Ghost again, Lord, please, Jesus. Oh, la baba. 
thank you. Oh, we thank you tonight, Lord. Oh, we praise you tonight, Lord. Oh, we magnify you tonight, Lord. Come on, just a couple more seconds. Just a couple of more seconds. Just a couple of more seconds. Come on, ask for the restoration. Be honest with him. You angry at that sister. You angry at that brother. You angry at that co-worker. You bitter with that man. You bitter with that woman. You ain't asked that person for forgiveness. If you can't forgive your brother or sister, your father in heaven, he won't forgive you. Get it right tonight. Get it right tonight. Get it right. Tell God to remove this evil eye. Tell him to remove this evil eye. I said, that's it. Let them hear you cry. 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 Let them hear your cry. Lord, please, Jesus. Restore unto us the joy of our salvation, Lord. Please restore them, Jesus. Lord, restore us tonight, Lord. Lord, we know we was hungry for you, Lord. We was young. We were filled with the Holy Ghost. We were praising. But somewhere down the line, Lord, we got distracted. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, that's it. I feel such a cry up in this place. Come on, pray for your pastor. Pray for your elect lady. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray for your kids. Pray for your kids. That's it. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord. Lord, we magnify you tonight, Jesus. Lord, we give you the honor, we give you the praise tonight, Lord. Lord, I obeyed you tonight, Lord. Please, Lord, move for your people tonight, Jesus. Restore, Lord, the joy of your salvation, Lord. Lord, we ask that you forgive every sin, Lord, known or unknown, seen or unseen. Lord, we, we thank you tonight. We praise you. Come on, stand to your feet. Heads bow, hands lifted, eyes closed. If you can't stand, then just stay where you're at. But if you can stand, if you can stand, if you can stand, Lord, restore him, Jesus. Lord, pour out your glory, Lord, please, Jesus. Oh, I send your anointing in this place, Lord. Oh, I send your power, Lord. God gonna move for you like you ain't never seen. Oh, la banere vi ita. Ya la banere vi oriando bo I see you went through some a couple weeks ago. Oh, la banere vi ita. But God told me to tell you that he gonna work this out for you. He gonna move in your behalf. He gonna open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. I see a hurt that's inside of you from the age around nine or 10 years old, but God say, he gonna restore your heart. He gonna restore your heart. He gonna restore your heart. I see you as a child just giving people stuff and just giving. God said he's getting ready to give to you. Oh, la 
አባንተ ኪስ ግብ ያንደረባ ቢውቴስ ለት ኢስ ጎ ኦባንተ ኪ አራማን ዲስ ዲፕሬሽን ስፒሪት ዲስ ክሬዚ ዲ አፖኮስ ኪ አራማን ያረ ሉሳ ኡላባ enemy been coming to your mind no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus I loose you all up my head and into the world he ain't fighting you with nothing crazy he be coming to your mind all up my head everybody in the middle of the east God. I speak peace I speak peace Come on lift your hands. Baba to koshkia na mnene. Baba mnene mnene. go back to your seat. Just look at somebody and say, I got my restoration. Just stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Touch your mind and body and spirit, Lord. Please, Jesus. How many can feel the presence of God in this place? I don't know. I ain't never seen you before. But I see like a stack of papers. But I see you going to sign them. And God getting ready to open up a door. Something that's due to you, God is getting ready to loose it. I don't know if it was an old accident, an old work, some old time. God getting ready to loose it like you ain't never seen. It seems like they've been holding it up and holding it up, but God getting ready to loose it. 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 I see you waking up in the morning praying, seeking God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All about me at every time. It was a dedication that you had. God getting ready to restore. All about me at every time. All about me at every Orient, God getting ready to restore. God getting ready to restore. Watch what I tell you. All about me at every Orient, God getting ready to restore. All about me at every time. All about me at every Orient, God getting ready to restore. You was handpicked and chose by God. All about me at every Orient, God getting ready to restore. 
this mind battle that be up on your mind, I'm going to loose this. Sometimes it try to make you feel like you're crazy, but uh-uh. I see God going down your body too. I see him going through your stomach. I see him going down your one leg. He's going to give you a meal. I don't know what's going on with your feet, but he's going to go down inside one of them feet, and he's going to give you a miracle. And that little heart burn, it, it like it won't stop. It just be burning like, man, I got heart burn. That's just a sign to let you know that God getting ready to move. seen a prayer life that God finna give you. He finna give you some. He getting ready to drop some up on you. It's gonna come. It's got, it like when it comes, you gonna feel it like drop up on top of your head. He gonna drop something up on you. He gonna drop something up on you. It's gonna be a, a wisdom, a knowledge. It's gonna be a, a long suffering. He getting ready to drop something up on you like you ain't never seen. I seen you speaking. It's gonna be soon. I see you speak. I see you minister. I see you minister. I mean, not only just me, I see people getting delivered. I see you laying hands on women and they're getting free. God getting ready to visit you like you ain't never seen. But it was a dedication, old dedication, that you're not keeping to the fullest. But God getting ready to restore you. He's going to take you greater in it. Watch what I tell you. That says the Lord. Come on, lift your hands. I don't know if y'all thought about moving. I was looking for the husband. But it's going to be a move that's going to come y'all way. It's going to be a move. But it's going to be a good move. It's going to be a move. It's going to be a move. It's going to be a move that you that y'all need. A good move. It ain't going to be nothing bad. It ain't going to be like you moving to Mexico or nowhere. It's going to be like you moving out of the ministry. You ain't going to be doing that. It's going to be a move, though. God going to give y'all a move. Watch what I tell you. Come on, lift your hands. Thank God on tonight. Thank God for his tender How many feel like God did something tonight? Did you feel something tonight? Hallelujah. I thank God on tonight. Thank him. It was just a simple. What I learned now is you could try to minister something that God don't even want to minister. He don't even want to, he don't even want to say it. When he do it, it's just easy. And it feel like you ain't. It's just smooth as Sunday morning. But when you when you doing it, you go out just crazy and like. Can't think nothing. But God, I thank God for what He's doing. But I need about 20 people to stand with me. Stand with me with 100.